basically what has happened throughout the whole year is that uh, the progressives have made all the concessions and Manchin and the conservatives have called all the shots. So there was a lot of happy talk in the spring about Biden being the new FDR, uh, that the Democrats had become a kind of social democratic party instead of that old corporate neoliberal party that they've been for decades. But looking at the product now, you have to say it's the old corporate neoliberalism. I mean, even what's still in the bill uh, is corporate welfare, privatized or means tested and or means tested, depending on what programs you look at, like child care, for example. Uh, the program they've got uh, will be paid for by employer and employee fees or taxes. Uh, and it'll be for private insurance contracting with private providers. It's like our privatized health care system with some public money, you know, basically propping it up. Instead of a public system that's universal, simple to administer, and without the enormous administrative overhead that this system, like our healthcare system, is going to create. So that's the old neoliberal thing, you know, privatize the delivery of public services. Same thing with the Civilian Climate Corps, which the Sunrise Movement has been pushing. Give them credit, they got the amount increased, one of the few things that was increased from 10 billion to 30 billion over 10 years. The problem is, and they didn't really raise a criticism of this that I know of, at least not in public, the program is going to run through AmeriCorps, you know, which does the VISTAs and the Peace Corps. And uh, it's an inefficient program because it takes the public money and then contracts with private nonprofits or for-profits that do the hiring of these, uh, you know, VISTA volunteers. So that takes a lot more administrative overhead, a lot more paperwork, filling out grant forms, getting the requests for proposals. So it becomes a middle class thing where these nonprofits absorb a lot of the money in uh, nice salaries, whereas the people that these programs are designed to help, who are tend to be low-income people, uh, they don't see the money. They see the money spent on their behalf, and then some people come in and, and work with them. That's where the American Corps or the climate, Civilian Climate Corps is being set up. It's not like the old Civilian Conservation Corps under the New Deal, which was its own program. It designed the projects in consultation with local government and hired the workers. And uh, so this is privatized as well. And then the, the child tax credit, which is only extended for a year, is, is more means tested than before. And already what we had this year, 14% of poor children didn't even get it because their parents didn't submit uh, income tax returns. And if they were gonna get the credit, they had to navigate a web page that was not that simple. A lot of people don't have access to the internet. Uh, they don't have it at home. They don't have a laptop they can take to the McDonald's parking lot. So a lot of people that were nominally qualified didn't get it. Now they set up a lot more barriers, more paperwork to document that, you know, and there are like seven or eight categories uh, you have to meet to be able to prove that you're deserving of the child tax credit. Of course, that's the parent or custodian, not the child who it's supposed to help, who's just, you know, a victim of this bureaucracy. So that's the old corporate neoliberalism. And then you got to look what was left out. And then you got to look what was left out. I mean, it's, it's astounding to me. There's such popular programs, like something like 80% of public opinion polling says they want Medicare to negotiate lower prices for prescription drugs with big pharma. And that's out. Now, one of the guys that uh, torpedoed that, Scott Peters, a Democrat from California who got a lot of big pharma money to torpedo Medicare negotiating prices, is coming out with a much watered down version uh, that uh, would deal only with post patent drugs. So after the patent runs out and they've you know, maximized their profit while it's still uh, protected intellectual property, then you can negotiate some prices. Um, and it's, you know, I don't know if that's going to go through, but that's what he is working on. Maybe it just covers a little bottom because I think voters in his district are probably mad at him. But he got a lot of big pharma money, as did the other Democrats 
like Senator Cinema, who objected to this, paid family and medical leave is out. I mean, if you look on a map, and the, you know, the, the only countries beside the U.S. that don't have paid family and medical leave are Suriname in South America and Papua New Guinea in uh, this, you know, north of Australia, and then a couple of tiny Pacific islands where those people, you know, live off their, their, their gardens and their fishing. They don't have a cash economy that paid family leave would, would be relevant to. So, I mean, we are just so backward in that respect. Very poor countries all over the world provide some uh, family and medical leave uh, for employees, and we don't. And it's not in this Build Back Better bill. And then you go to climate, uh, the most uh, strongest piece of what was left, and we've had a lot of criticisms of their climate approach, but there was a clean energy standard. They called it a clean energy performance program where they would pay utilities to uh, increase their renewables and they get the payment if they increase it by 4% or more a year. And it also said, if you don't increase it by 4% or more a year, you're gonna be penalized with fines. So it was a carrot and a stick. They got rid of all the carrots. So now all there is, is hundreds of billions of dollars over the next decade in uh, tax incentives and subsidies and loans, low interest loans uh, to go renewable. But all I think that's gonna do is, is repeat the pattern we've seen for the last decade. We have had an increase in renewables, particularly as the price has gone down, but it's only really expanded our total energy. It has not replaced the fossil fuels. And what we found from a UN production gap study came out recently is that the US plans to increase its oil production 17% and its gas production 12% by 2030. That's mostly fracked oil and fracked gas. And around the world, uh, the plant oil, gas, and coal production is 120% over what a carbon budget to meet the 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold or goal that the Paris Climate Agreement set as sort of the safety boundary for the climate. So I mean, like I said, it, and this is corporate neoliberalism, you know, uh, subsidized corporations. And you got to realize the solar market is dominated by ExxonMobil, Chevron, and BP. And the wind market is dominated by GE and Siemens and Vestas. Uh, and I'm talking like 80% of market share. So these are subsidies to you know big business not you know people think of little solar installers and whatnot they're not going to get the money it's going to go to these big uh energy and industrial or manufacturing corporations which in our eco socialist green new deal we want to take over and run as public utilities and make them do the right thing phase out their fossil fuels and phase in the uh, renewables free community college very popular left out expanding medicare coverage uh, to age 60 and vision and dental benefits. Now, one of the ironies here is that one of the progressives, uh, Pramila Jayapal, who has uh, you know, been leading, kind of speaking for the progressives as they take concession after concession, and said uh, when Biden came out with his framework that uh, they, they passed a resolution, the progressive caucus saying we enthusiastically support it. They rightly said we're not going to vote for it until, or for the bipartisan infrastructure bill until we see the text and it's on the agenda, the, the Build Back Better reconciliation bill. That was understandable, but they have basically give their blessings to this way scaled down neoliberal kind of approach to these issues. Um, so now Jayapal, when she put in the House version of single payer, again, more room for privatization, private insurance administration of Medicare benefits, uh, but then when she, at her news conference, when she released it, it was Medicare for all, but she basically said, I'm with Bernie, Medicare for 60 and up, which was what Bernie Sanders was pushing. He has not put his single payer Medicare for all bill in the Senate this session. Um, so they've been, the progressives have been retreating on Medicare for all every step of the way. And uh, it's off the agenda now, as far as they're concerned. And then when it came to paying for this thing, 
I mean, the, the main proposal was to increase corporate and uh, personal income tax brackets, basically back to where they were before Trump's uh, tax cuts for the rich. And, you know, Manchin and Cinema and those conservative House Democrats objected to that. So now they got a, a range of small uh, things like uh, more enforcement so that the rich uh, evade taxes less. Um, trying to remember, there's like eight or nine of them. Uh, a 15% corporate minimum income tax. It's kind of a, a grab bag. And it's not clear to me without looking more deeply, but I'm skeptical that it's going to raise what they say. Now, it actually says it's going to raise $2 trillion or $1,995 billion, which is more than they plan to spend. So I don't know. This is, again, um, austerity. They're going to raise more money than they're going to spend under this bill. And so, yeah, I, I've been saying the progressives made the concessions, the conservative Democrats called the shots, and Biden allied with the conservatives because the progressives said, you know, he's the, he's the final arbiter. And they've been so, you know, they've been praising Biden to the, you know, all the time. And on the one hand, it's understandable. The Democrats have narrow majorities so their conservatives can assert their power. But there was another path that could have been taken that maybe a Bernie Sanders would have took, but Biden didn't. And that is to go to the public, go on the media, go out to the states and say, here's what we're in, what is in the bill, like negotiating drug prices, Medicare on behalf of all the people with the drug companies. Um, and, and the other programs that are in it are were cut. And because people, all people have heard is, you know, how much it's going to cost without knowing what's in it and build support and build pressure on the mansions and the cinemas and the conservative House Democrats. Instead, Biden pandered to the conservatives and, you know, the progressive caucus has gone along for the ride. Uh, they really only leverage they have was to keep the two bills linked because they did get that promise at one point. So we'll see what happens next week. But. You know, I think the bottom line is we still need a real Green New Deal like we were talking about, a plan with uh, public ownership of the, the energy transportation and key manufacturing sectors to get to 100 percent clean energy in a decade and then begin uh, reducing carbon emissions with uh, ecosystem, you know, forest reforestation and other uh, ways of drawing carbon back into the out of the atmosphere and back into the biosphere or the geosphere, and uh, then we need an economic bill of rights that, that guarantees people and gives them a legal right to sue if the government doesn't provide things like a living wage job, an income of poverty, affordable housing, quality health care, lifelong public education, and a secure retirement. <coughs> so whatever happens, whenever they vote on this stuff, uh, we still have a lot more to push for.